So um, thank you for joining us. Emma McKendrick, headmistress of Down House. Really lovely to see you. Um, Pleasure. And um, just to kick off, Emma, you, you've been at Down, I believe, for over 20 years now. Is that right? God, yeah. I'm not quite sure how that happened. But yes, this <laughs> is my, my, oh, my 24th year. So. Uh, oh, wow. Gosh. Yeah. But, and before uh, that, you were, you were actually a headmistress at Royal School Bath, I believe. Um, I was, and, yeah. And you joined there. We, we're not going to go into numbers, but, it, but you were clearly pretty young when you started. Um, <laughs> I, I'm interested to, to know a little more about whether or not the reality has met expectation or if indeed you, you knew what was ahead of you, I guess. Do you know, I don't think, uh, and, and I possibly shouldn't admit it, but I don't think I really thought about the reality no. it was just a really exciting opportunity and you know I still think it is a really exciting opportunity even yeah. nearly 30 years later yeah um, because well, it's you know young people no, are exciting yeah and presumably no, no day is quite like another so that's what keeps it fresh and, and diverse no I, I think the the diversity of the role and plus the the diversity of you know your you're preparing young people for a, a, an ever-changing world. Sure. Um, and whilst your values don't change, there's always a, a, a moment of, of reflection and re-evaluation about what, what we're doing, I think, that mm. keeps it fresh. Absolutely. And education doesn't stand still, does it? So you're, you're always having to... And current times are testament to that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you wouldn't want it to stand still. I think no. if you, you, you know, you only go backwards or forwards, I think, and, and you've got to keep moving forwards. Absolutely. Um, and, and what do you believe um, that, that sort of sets down as a, a, apart from other leading? I mean, you, you've got a, a fantastic reputation. Um, I'm just interested to know what you would highlight as, as being sort of a USP, if you like, for Down. Gosh, I mean, I, I think there are lots of things that are important to us um, and, and and I'm going to take the the pastoral and the academic as a given in the sense that yeah you know I hope we're all delivering that but what's what's really important to us I suppose is the is making sure the girls leave us with a, a really good strong global outlook um, so we have our as, as you may know we've just uh, acquired Sauveter and we send the girls out to to France, which we've been doing for a number of years. We've got yeah. a big global exchange program and uh, global internships. So I think that's really important to us. Mm. Um, our technology is really important to us. And we, you know, we've done a lot of work with Microsoft and uh, we're a showcase school and hoping to develop that. Mm. Um, and we do a huge amount with our alumni. We've got a brilliant alumni networking, uh, sort of professional networking groups um, which are very, very vibrant. So those are three things we've really been focusing on and I, yeah. I think are, are unique to us, I think, in, in the measure in which they're done. Absolutely. And can I just go back to the, to the Sauveter? Uh, that, that's a term that girls spend, obviously, in France. But where, whereabouts does that fall in, in the sort of academic year, as it were? So they would go in year eight. Um, right. And we, the year group... In a typical year, the year group would be divided into half, with half going in the Michaelmas term and half going in the Lent term. Okay, okay. That is amazing, isn't it, as an experience? And presumably they're, they're talking French. I mean, is <laughs> elevated by some margin, I should think. Yeah, it, it makes a huge difference to your ability to, to listen to the confidence to use the language. Yeah. Um, and actually they grow enormously in confidence as a result of that and perhaps just being that little bit further away from home and managing mm. in a, a different setting for many of them. No, absolutely. Are the breaks on that at the moment? Are there for obvious reasons? They yeah. Are, unfortunately. Yeah. 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 So Hopefully I'm, not for long. No. Finger, <laughs> fingers crossed next year will be a, a, a good year if we don't get them out this year. Yeah, no, absolutely. And Emma, what are your thoughts, having obviously um, led a, a, a single sex school for, for the last 20 odd years? Um, I'm interested to know your thoughts as to, as to how and why you think girls thrive in a, in a single sex environment for, for educational purposes and, and, dare I say it, for pastoral. Yeah. Do you know, I think it, it, it is for, for me, if, if there was only one gift you could give to a girl when they left, it would be the gift of confidence and a sure. sense of self-worth mm. and actually I think in a 
a single sex setting, we're able to give them a, a huge range of opportunities, all of which are equally open to them, yeah. um, regardless of, of what. And, and it takes away in a, in a pretty fast changing, largely world with a lot of social media, mm. just enables them to grow at a pace and a time that suits them. Yeah. They've got lots of examples of, of leadership and so I hope it, it grows their confidence and it also enables them to think big in terms of their dreams. And, and I don't mean to be entitled, mm. I mean just to have those aspirations mm. and to have, see lots of people around them who, who are achieving those things. Mm. Yeah, to think big. <laughs> yeah, really important. Yeah. No, absolutely. And actually, that leads very, very well on to my next question, which is, uh, as a mother of four daughters myself, is, I'm afraid, is slightly pointed. <laughs> but in a, in a society which is so, well, so led by image and likability, uh, literally, you know, on social media and otherwise, how do we best guide our daughters on finding their true identity and being proud of it once they've found it? Do you know, I think it's it, it's a long journey, isn't it, with, with sort of bumps and twists in, in mm. the way. But I think the, you know, w certainly what we do is to say to them, their uniqueness is mm. their greatest strength. Yeah. Um, and actually what they bring uniquely makes a difference. And it is just a constant encouragement that to value the things that they're good at. Yeah. Not, there is no such thing as perfection and to really make sure that we are just continually mm. putting that message out. Mm. And actually it is not trying to be perfect, it's trying to capitalize on, on you, you as a person, your great strengths, and to look at those in others, mm. um, and really to value those and not to worry about what you can't mm. do. And yeah. so I don't think there's a quick fix to that, it's just a continual process of, of reinforcement. Yeah. Um, because yeah. the likes don't last. No, and I think also, particularly in the context of the teenage years where the vast majority just want to sort of blend into the background, they don't necessarily want to be sort of different. It, as you say, championing your individuality is, is, is a much bigger phrase than, than much easier done, said than done. It, it, it is, but it is a, there is a point at which it does come good once yeah. you get through that phase where as you rightly say, children just want to belong to a group. Mm. Mm. But then it does, it does grow out of that. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it's allowing them the sort of stability around them to, to blossom, really, isn't it? And to find yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and to give them lots of, lots of role models that are, that are different. Mm. And um, actually, do you find that your alumni are coming back and, and being those role models? I mean, they sound like they're very inter interactive with your you know, your, your current pupils? That they are, you know, they're, they're fabulous and they are in such diverse um, mm. careers and diverse, um, well, people and individuals, of, of course. Sure. And they will come back and they will share that and they'll mentor. Uh, and, and in fact, we're just developing a scheme whereby that they will be able to link with all sorts of different people and get, get advice through the alumni body as well. But sure if you see somebody who's been here achieving a whole range of things, you believe that's possible for you exactly. as well. Yes, it, it's reachable. Absolutely. No. Um, a tough one for you, Emma, because you've been a headmistress for, for, for quite a long time, but had you not gone down this particular path, yeah. uh, would you, is there a dream job that you, you might have thought of? So we were just having this conversation before we started <laughs> and the trouble is there are lots, actually, yeah. but, 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 um, I think if if I could, it'd probably be something in international relations where it's, you know, cross cultures, connecting people across cultures and, and, and traveling. Oh, so great. I okay. used to think I'd love to be a pilot, but I, I don't like heights, so it's not great. <laughs> that might have been an issue. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> love that. Um, and I've obviously been doing a little bit of reading around and, and, and um, down... I said, was going to say professors, which sounds rather um, rather um, disparaging, but it does profess not to have a typical type of downhouse girl. Yeah. And I'm interested to know what advice you might offer prospective parents if they're looking at down and they're trying to do a good match to, to 
a little person that hasn't quite developed into the person they're going to be, how, how you would best advise them that the education at Down can suit all? I, do you know, I think the only things that you, you need to thrive at Down are that you're going to really enjoy community living and being part of a community. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, and, and that the family is going to enjoy being part of a community because it's not just a decision for, for the child, but the whole family mm -hmm. is part of that journey. Mm -hmm. um, and somebody that is going to, in their own individual way, want to take advantage of the range of opportunities. Now, mm -hmm. you can do that quietly. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to be an extrovert to do that. But you do have to enjoy that sort of variety and, and, mm -hmm. and what a community can offer you. Beyond that, we just want you to be your own person. Mm. And do you have lots of siblings? Do you have families that track through several children with you? We do. Mm. Uh, we do. And, and some, you know, families of two, three, four, uh, even five. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> You've really got to know them pretty well by number five. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> oh, well, that's lovely, though, because I think the family aspect, uh, particularly to a boarding school, is very important, I think. I'm not saying one size fits all by any means, but actually a school of your size should uh, be able to accommodate all sorts of different skill sets. So it, it's lovely that you can have lots, you know, siblings together. Yeah, and, and you do what each sibling is, their own story and their own journey. And, and I think it's big enough for them to find that space, yeah. but also have each other as well. Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, and just a slightly divergence, only because I last time I came, you just completed the. It, it's the Murray Centre, isn't it? The Murray Building Centre. Absolutely. It looks unbelievable. I mean, that must have gone down very well with your sixth formers, particularly, isn't it? The, it has. They they love it. I mean, it's got a a beautiful library at the top that they love, and equally they love the the very wonderful coffee machine on the ground floor <laughs> as well. Um, I have to admit, I did sample that on my last <laughs> meeting, and it was particularly great. Um, but that's wonderful because that's that. I mean, that was a big fundraise, I guess. Or how how was that? It it, it was. It was a real. Uh, June, it was a, a fantastic community effort, yeah. uh, and so it was you know, part school funded, but a huge amount came from both the the, the parents and the alumni. Yeah. Uh, so watching that come to fruition and and watching it be used by all the children through the ages, plus parents yeah. when they come into to watch matches and all sorts of things. Absolutely, um, yeah. It, it's become a real, a real sort of heart for the school. Well, it's so well positioned within the school that I can imagine it, it will become the central hub almost. Yeah, it, yeah. it, it is. Yeah. And, uh, no, and, and a great place for, uh, you know, for talks and lectures and, mm -hmm. and, and things as well. So uh, and what, and I can see it. What's, yes, exactly. And what's next on the agenda on, on that for, on sort of capital projects? Gosh, I... I think there are a couple of things. We're going to keep the, the, the sort of upgrading of our, our boarding houses. So that, yeah. that'll tick alongside. And then our next uh, project that we'd like to do is a, a, a sort of maths and music faculty school and with another multi-purpose uh, hall, okay. particularly designed for music. But, you know, there is so much we can do in terms of performance and, and lectures and workshops that we'd love to have one which, you know, particularly lent itself to music and the performing arts on the other side of the, uh, the yeah. campus. So that's what yeah. we're looking at at the moment. Amazing. It's exciting to have things that you can look forward to, actually, isn't it? Projects or otherwise. Yeah, it's uh, and really important to, to do that, and to have that plan, I think, so we know what we're aiming towards as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. And Emma, what might be something that um, most people don't know about you, either a, a passion or, or a skill that perhaps you haven't um, aired yet? <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, uh, <laughs> I, did, uh, I, I did ask my children this and they said, mum, you mustn't say anything too embarrassing. So, uh, <laughs> Isn't that our job? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, well I, I, I hesitate to say this, but I, I spoke quite a few people. Now, I, I did study Dutch at university, but actually, do you know, I love dancing. There you are. Not oh, many people would know that. Oh, we so. are going to be put upon now. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the same as being good at it. All oh, right. OK. Yes. No, fair enough. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, just going back a, a quick step on, on the boarding front, which I know, um, fun enough, I've had chats recently um, and I know that you're 
hugely advocating the, the family element of boarding. And as you say, when a family is looking around down, it is it is a, a family decision, if you like. Um, I think the old days of, of um, sending a child to boarding school and not seeing them from one term to the next are well and truly over. If, if a, a family was hesitant about the boarding aspect, can you give some sort of assurances as to why you believe it is such an integral part to, to a child's education? Do you know, I, th I think there are a couple of things, well, well, three things probably. One is it, you're never sending your children away. It really yeah. is a partnership and actually that is what gives the children security if you're both doing it together. Sure. Um, it gives just the most amazing range of opportunities mm. um, and you know watching what has some young people develop because of the opportunities they're given uh, is phenomenal I think mm. uh, and also they you know, in terms of preparing you for later life mm. you know, a lot of our alumni will say I could work with anyone anywhere mm. in the world mm. because I've learned to live with all sorts of different characters um, and not necessarily all of whom I thought I would get on with straight away yeah. but you yeah. learn to really appreciate them and, and for the workplace and university it, it's it's a wonderful gift to go in with to feel mm. actually I don't mind where you put me no, I huge. can get yeah. on with these people yeah no I think that absolutely it's a, a real life skill isn't it yeah yeah it, re it really is yeah um and uh, and actually that just that sense of valuing oh we've frozen i don't know whether we've both frozen or whether perhaps dan has got a little glitch hopefully we'll get back online uh bear with us looks like it's trying sorry oh, did we lose a moment we lost you for a split second but don't you worry you're back <laughs> um Sorry, I missed your last comment about boarding. I do apologise. Um, no, and, and I've slightly forgotten what it Don't was as worry. well. But it was, no, uh, yeah. No. Don't worry, I'm glad it happens to you as well as the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I, I tell you what, actually, what struck me particularly is that um, uh, from the days of when we were at school, or certainly I was, you also have got lovely social events with other schools, boys included. I mean, there, there's a lot going on, isn't there? It's not like they are you know, locked up in the pine trees and, and never seen again your girls. They are very interactive. Oh, goodness. So. And, and actually it is, uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of talk of boarding schools being bubbles, but actually what's it, at, at one level, they're safe spaces yeah. Uh, yeah. For, for children to grow at their own rate. The opportunities for, for meeting and connecting with, you know, boys from different schools, other local schools mm. and worldwide. Yes. You know, that, when I look at some of the you know, tech projects and you go in and you'll see a group of girls talking to a, a group in a school in California, yeah. you know, it is very much more outward looking. Yeah. And I think probably that hopefully it, it was happening before, but I hope it's one of the legacies of lockdown as well. Is it has proven that, you know, you can connect with all sorts of people in all sorts of different areas of the world very, very easily. You really can. And actually, I hope we will retain that. I think you're right, because actually you can provide, you know, you can get four fantastically, you know, high profile people mm. or experienced people together sure. virtually in a way you wouldn't be able to no, get absolutely. them physically. Yeah, we've got to remember the advantages, haven't we? Although we're desperate to get back to normal life. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's true. And Emma, um, a slightly loaded question because I, I, as you may know, was actually at Down many, many moons ago. Um, but I was interested to know whether you think that there are common characteristics of, a, of an old Down house girl and whether there is a thread that connects us. Um, I, I think there is. And I think it is. And, and I often ask the, the uh, alumni or, or, yeah. or the old girls what they think it is quite often they say we we all talk a lot and we love to share our news mm. uh because of that that sort of community but that there is a, an incredible strength of friendship i sense mm. across uh the the downhouse community there is an incredible sense of i think if i said understated confidence in a lot of downhouse alumni yeah. Yeah. Um, who really have achieved wonderful things, but 
often have no idea of how good they are in what they've they've done mm. um uh, and and i love to see that and their uniqueness and the diversity yeah yeah and sometimes it's retrospective isn't it you can't see it until tens of years later i mean i you know certainly from my perspective you know there were huge lessons learned but i didn't necessarily understand that until quite later on in life no no and i i we i see that often with the uh well, what I see with the alumni when we meet with them five, 10, 15 years on is yeah. also a huge shared pride in each other and in their yes. collective yeah. experience. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and Emma, just to, to end up, I'm very conscious of your time, but I, I'd love to, having watched and, and been integral in such huge change at Down over the last um, few years, if you had a crystal ball and you could look into it um, and have a have a little glance at what the future might hold for Down, or indeed your sort of hopes and dreams for it, um, can you give us any sort of little snippets? Gosh, I mean, I, I hope its its ethos and values will stay because that's you know that that's an anchor for people and that's a that that is so important to, mm. well to us and and is timeless actually. I think as a school, we'll continue to you know, evolve in terms of our, our, our infrastructure, et cetera. But looking further into the future, I think it would be unusual to see single standalone schools. I think, you know, I hope you might see a lot of down mm. schools mm. Uh, around, mm. around the globe mm. uh, and perhaps even within the, the UK uh, as well, because sure. I think that's part of where the strength of the independent sector will be. I hope it'll be that we're playing a, a significant part in the community as well as for our own students here. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, really focusing on quality and care. So I don't think those should change. Mm. But I think, you know, so I think you're going to see groups of schools rather than single schools going on into the future. So the brand will remain, but it'll just be rolled out and, and have a wider exposure as a result. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, exciting times. I will look forward to watching that with great interest. <laughs> Emma, thank you for your time today. Really appreciate it and for all your support. And um, we love working with Down. We've, we've recently done a, uh, a financial awareness course actually with uh, some of your sick formers, which I hope went down well, but we had great feedback from. So um, cool. lots more in the pipeline. Fantastic. And, and thank you very much for, for the opportunity. And uh, we look forward to welcoming you back fairly shortly, I hope. Absolutely. Look forward to it too. Many thanks, Emma. Thanks. Take, Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.